two approaches for watercolor painting. What's up friends, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In this video, I want to talk about two different approaches for watercolor paintings that can really enrich and help you and your paintings. Now, this is something I learned from my own personal experience. It's something I am sort of playing around with right now. And I just found it by accident, but uh, of course it's based on a concept I already knew. So uh, I want to show you just two paintings and you've seen them a second ago, uh, these two that I did now it's based on a picture let's do them one by one this is the first and this is, is the second now uh, these are based on a picture I took uh, in Akko in the north of Israel and I'll put a picture I think here or here um, and just a beautiful uh, port city with amazing view and I just did these two paintings one by one and I just understood that there is a fundamental difference between them. Now, uh, I'm gonna put also a picture here just so you can see like the final one. Um, so the first one, this one, uh, what I did, my approach was, was very plain air-like, which is the first approach I wanna talk about in this video. So what I did was actually just fill in the gaps. So for example, I did a, the sky and I sort of did negative painting uh, around all of these areas. I uh, then filled in the boat, I added this, the port, everything, and I just went from top to bottom, creating a first wash and then a second wash, but I didn't cover everything. I literally painted shapes inside. Now, this is good if you want to get a quick result or a quick plain air sketch outside or if you want to do a quick study. It's very interesting. Um, I will show also the comparison of these two in a moment after we'll go through uh, both of them. Now, this is very interesting because I love this result, you know? I just really love the way it turned out. Then I did a second one, and let me show you this one. Now, you may recognize already there's a bit of a difference. So, the first thing is, I think this one, the, the paint is less vibrant, but that, that has nothing to do with it. It's just, I used a bit of a different mix. Uh, but what you may notice is how, for example, the sky wash is a little more even. By the way, sorry for not looking at you, I'm just looking at the painting while talking uh, on the little screen of the camera. So, I'll do my best to look at you guys. And so, the skies here, uh, you, see, you may see how they're more even, you can see them behind the boat, as uh, opposed to this one, which is a little more fragmented. Okay, so hopefully you get what I'm saying. I just did this one with a very even initial wash, which I can show you here because I published it on Snapchat and Instagram. So I just started with a very even wash for the sky, for the water, for this, everything. I just let everything blend and you can see it here. Um, so it's very interesting because I like both results, but I kind of feel like both of them have a life of their own. So let me put both of them right now on uh, screen. Now, for, so the, the one that was done, um, I'm gonna put it on the right. The one on the right is actually uh, the one I did fragmented, just uh, part by part. And the one on the left is the one I did with even washes. Both look good. Now, the t sort of uh, more final uh, way of doing a painting when you're working really for a painting that's meant to be final, I guess, is the way on the left. Uh, like, everything is so even and the, it's just a correct way to do a finalized work. But if you're outdoors, painting, enjoying yourself and you want to get a quick sort of sketch or if you're using a very thin paper or like a sketchbook you can't get sometimes too many washes so you just put in the darks, put in the lights all in one wash and sort of it may look a little more fragmented uh, like, like here but uh, it has more of a spontaneous look. Now both, uh, both ways are valid, I just wanted to present you with these two approaches and again, one of them is more traditionally considered the correct way to do it, but, you know, who am I to say? Uh, I think anyone should work in the style they like, as long as their art gives value to someone out there, you know. Some art may be a little... I saw a very interesting video on modern art that's sort of bashed it. Now, I'm not one to bash any kind of art, but some of the modern art stuff is really a bit ridiculous. I saw something like a bag of rice, and that's the art exhibit. And it's kind of, you know... Uh, it just made me laugh. But anyway, uh, as long as your art um, does give value to someone, if that's your goal, if you want to make stuff for yourself, cool, you know, it's okay. But if your goal is to inspire others and, and have them admire your art or you as an artist, um, I think 
that as long as someone gets value, like real value from your painting, they look at it and wow, like they they enjoy it. It's good. Whatever approach you use, is perfect. Um, so this is it. Just my thoughts for this video. I'm gonna put up again both of them just for your uh, comparison, so you can enjoy them. And yeah, this one was done uh, really uh, fragmented, and this one was done a little more um, in an organized fashion. Um, with that being said, what I do take from uh, these two is that the, the one I did more fragmented is turned out a little more vibrant. Now, it shouldn't be the case. I can get the really well-organized one more vibrant as well, um, so the more even one. And so what I will focus on for the next uh, few weeks, probably days, is to keep the colors vibrancy to uh, make sure I don't lose that too much. Uh, if I want to use muted, I will use them, but deliberately. I don't want to accidentally lose the beautiful color of them. Here's just a sketch pad that I just started sketching crap on. <laughs> and you can see it's much more, the red here is much more vibrant than here. Here it's dead, here it's alive. And so I just wanna try and work on that and focus on that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Snapchat and Instagram where I share all of the processes of the paintings. I'm doing really cool stuff. Uh, you can see it on my stories on both of them. And that's it. Subscribe also on YouTube because I think like this uh, video making is a major part of what I enjoy doing and I want to continue doing that and I'm really uh, raising the bar for myself to produce more and publish more and better quality. So anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you again in another video soon. Take care.